Hello everyone and welcome back to another video here on my channel today. I'm going to be giving you a really helpful production tip on how to get much cleaner reverb with one little trick. Now in hindsight, this is a really kind of overlooked thing not a lot of people would think to do, but once I show you this you'll probably use it all the time. It's incredibly useful just for giving you way more control over your reverb sound. So I have this project open here and you're going to notice I do have this main piano sound which sounds like this. Right, so that is just two different pianos that I've rooted into one channel here, so on its own. And I want to put reverb on this. Now normally, you'd think just go ahead and add reverb right here and change it to whatever settings you want. That's actually not what we're going to do here. Instead, and this is the way you get a lot of control over it and it opens the possibility for a lot of different options, what I'm going to do is route this to another channel. I'm going to keep it linked to the master, like so, but it is now pointing from track 5, it's also going to track 6. On track 6, I'm going to add my reverb plugin, so in this instance, NFL Studio, I'm just using Fruity Reverb 2. And you'll notice on this plugin specifically, there's a volume slider for dry. This of course means the dry signal and then wet being like after reverb. What we're going to do here is take the dry all the way down to zero. On other plugins, this might be called mix and you might have to put it at 100% for it to just be the reverb is basically what we're trying to do here. I'm also going to crank wet all the way up to the top. And again, now if I press play, what this has done is it's given us our very own reverb channel. If I unlink the initial one from the master, you will hear just the reverb. But the reason this is different is because now after that reverb in your effects chain, you could add any plugin you want. Most notably or important would be like Pro-Q3 or another EQ, because you can go ahead and EQ your reverb signal separately from the entire rest of that sound. If you were to put this under a reverb plugin on your initial chain, it's going to affect everything. But in this instance specifically, it's only affecting that reverb. And this gives you much more control than just using like a built-in EQ setting that's on the reverb because it's usually not as in-depth as this. But it doesn't stop there. You could add a chorus if you wanted to. You could add a pitcher plugin that ups it by like, I don't know, like a whole octave or something just to give you a different sound. You could add different forms of delay. You could add whatever effects you want that only apply to the reverb. And once you want it back on everything in the way it should be, you just simply put that initial channel back to your master and then mix the reverb channel, which is this one, to taste. So like I'm thinking much less decay. That's it right there. I think that sounds really good. And again, we have so much control over it that we otherwise wouldn't. Say you're EQing something that's like super bassy. You could use this to do a nice custom EQ shape, getting rid of any unnecessary lows, which will make your mix as a whole a lot less muddy. In this specific instance, it's more of a background reverb, so it's not too important. But there are times where this trick will absolutely save your mix down. So I highly recommend you start doing this. And of course, if you want things to stay organized in your project, don't be like me, actually go ahead and label them. I haven't done that here, so it looks very confusing to someone who maybe opens this for the first time. But just label them and it'll make sense, and this is something you should absolutely get in the habit of doing anytime you're using a big reverb. You don't have to use it every time, especially if it's a simple sound that doesn't really need it, but this is definitely something to keep in mind. Anyway, short of tutorial here, just wanted to explain this technique, it's really useful. Drop a like on this video if you enjoyed, and if you're a new visitor here on this channel, don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with all of my future content. But anyways, thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.